Have you gotten accustomed to people saying Super Bowl champion? A little bit, but I think it's still sinking in um, as we've been kind of celebrating the whole last week, um, just kind of enjoying it. We were going at it for a while, and uh, we're all cooped up for like 20, 20 straight weeks, even more than that, uh, if you include camp. So uh, it's nice to finally be able to get out of the house a little bit. Um, so it's been it's been fun, and it's starting to, starting to sink in. What has what this week been like? To take for the 99.999% of us who will never win a Super Bowl, tell us about <laughs> it. What is this week like? It's been crazy. Uh, really, ever since uh, the, the the game was over Sunday night, I mean, just starting with the celebration was was wild. Um, we uh, we had a party at the aquarium after, and, and Migos and Ludacris were there, and then uh, and then just kind of hanging out with everybody, friends, family, the whole week, just celebrating everything you've accomplished, and just uh, uh, every everyone for me at least was down here that kind of helped me throughout my whole life. My parents, you know, my siblings, my wife, uh, her family, so. Um, just really fun to kind of celebrate and remember all the moments that, that helped you get to this point. It's got to be. It, it's an extraordinary thing. And uh, you know what? I, I hope that you go on to have a long career and have a lot of great moments. But the I don't know that you will ever have one quite like what happened at the end of the first half of the NFC Championship game. As I was trying to introduce you an hour ago, I said that I think that was the biggest play of the NFL season. Take us back to that whole sequence where first your team is going to punt, then the punt team comes off, now you're going for it on fourth down. Now all of a sudden, you're in the end zone with one second left in the half. Take us back to that sequence. Yeah, that was an unbelievable moment. Uh, certainly one that I will never forget. One I don't even know if I could have dreamed of it. Um, but, I mean, I remember, yeah, we, we, we sent the punt team out, and we were all kind of hoping we were going to go for it. And then our coaches, like they always do, B.A. and Byron are, are super aggressive, always in attack mode, so they decided to put the offense back out there. And then I think uh, I think uh, Lenny Lenny Fournette had a big uh, big catch to convert that fourth down. And then um, we were really just going to – I thought it was going to be more like a Hail Mary type play on my touchdown. Um, I was telling Chris to widen out with a bunch of me. I was thinking we were both going to run to the back corner of the end zone. And just You know, I was going to hope to catch a tip ball, but then – uh, we saw they were in the, kind of like a cover one type defense, and my corner was just kind of like ten yards ten yards off me in a slow back pedal. So I was able to just really just run right by him, uh, like you guys all saw. And then Tom, Tom saw the same thing and just put a put a easy ball out there for me. Uh, and it's just a play we've made countless times, you know, over the summer and then throughout the season. So um, just an unbelievable moment um, with one second left, like you said, to, to give us a little cushion going into half. Um, so it was a uh, it was a great play. It was a jolt. I mean, it was it was one of those huge turning point kinds of moments, and your team had that again in the Super Bowl, where where you score the late touchdown before halftime, and those those kinds of things become incredibly important. Scotty Miller of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is with me here, and and I, I heard some people suggesting, and I don't think this is a pejorative. I, I think it's a reasonable question that there, there are very few white wide receivers in the National Football League, and generally they are possession guys, and and maybe sometimes people underestimate you because. Of that, do do you feel you have been underestimated in your career as a receiver because you're white? Um, I mean, I don't know. I don't want to, you know, go too far into if I'm white or or why, but I will say I for sure have been underestimated. Um, even just like in getting recruited, um, really my whole life just getting doubted as a player. And as far as like guys going up against me, no one really thinks I can run how I can run until they until they get up get up and have to run with me on a deep ball. Um, but I think at this point, I've been doing it all, all year, all my career. But but this year, especially in the NFL, I've been running by dudes um, at a pretty good clip. So I think most people know I can, I can run a little bit. So I think if you don't know that, you're just not not uh, looking at your scouting report. Um, but uh, but I mean, if people want to disrespect me, I, I mean, I like that. It makes it makes it easier for me. I mean, that, that's the, the next thing you know. You're behind them and you're in the end zone. So <laughs> it works yeah, out just exactly. fine. All right. So so you know that um, I, I saw when you were on Dan Patrick's show, you were talking about whether you're as fast as Tyreek Hill and all of that. I'm not sure if you know this, but Tyreek Hill was on my TV show on Get Up, and we're putting together a race with him and Adam Schefter for, um, for charity. <laughs> How do you feel? Would you be willing to race Shefty? I'm representing Mr. Schefter in these negotiations. Are you willing to race Shefty? For charity, because he's he's deceptively fast too. Yeah, I don't know. I've seen him. I've seen him on a couple of you guys' clips. You know, on uh, before Monday Night Football and stuff like that. He can. He looks like he can cook a little bit. So I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of a lose lose situation for me because if he if he gets me, then then that's not good. And if if I beat him, it, that's what everyone expects. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but yeah, I, I'd love to. I'd love to do whatever for charity. 
Um, I'd love to do something with Tyreek too, but yeah, I'd love to race Schefter. That'd be, that'd be fun. I, I love the healthy fear you're at least feigning to have of Adam Schefter's speed. I think that's great. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think that's great. Hey, one thing, the real reason, well, not, there are so many reasons I wanted to have you on, but I loved this story. Just going to sit back and have a little story time. Tell me a story. Before the Super Bowl, I read a story, and I don't know how many people across the country know it, but tell everybody how your wife was played an integral role in getting you ready for the season. Oh, yeah, she was, uh, she was huge. During the pandemic, uh, we really couldn't go work out anywhere. Um, so she, uh, we would go out. We, I lived in a townhouse in South Tampa last year. We'd go get this little patch of grass on the side of the house, and she would just throw me the ball for like an hour every single day, just work on over shoulders and catches. And she actually has a pretty good arm, too. Um, so she just rifled the ball at me for about an hour every day, like I said. And, uh, and she really helped me get ready before, before Tom showed up. Um, and she, she let Tom take over. But also, when I was getting ready for my, for my pro day, um, I, was, I was working out up in New Jersey where she's from, and I didn't have a quarterback. So I would just go out the field with her, and, and she would get the job done. It, it really helped me out. So um, it's also saved me a few bucks not having to buy a jugs machine. So, uh, so it's, been, uh, it's been pretty good. I'm pretty thankful for, for her. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.